everybody, this is Amanda from Three Birds Design and I'm here today to teach you all about quilling. At least the basics of quilling. We're gonna keep this pretty simple. So first, what the heck is quilling? Never heard of this. It's basically an ancient art form where you take thin strips of paper, you twirl, twirl them, curl them, twist them, pinch them, glue them, and then you make pretty shapes with them. It's very, very simple and we're gonna learn how to do it right now. So first, let's talk about your tools. First most important tool is the quilling tool. So this is basically a round tool that has a metal slotted end at the tip. That's where you're going to stick your paper and you're going to turn it to twirl your paper. It's pretty simple. Uh, second most important tool is your template. You can see this has different sized holes with numbers. That's your different sizes. So when you make a shape with quilling, usually you make multiple coils and then you combine them to make a shape. For instance, this flower. Each of these petals needs to be the same size coil, and then you pinch them and glue them together. So that's where your template comes in handy because you can make all these coils a uniform size. If we just kind of made coils willy-nilly and glued them together, it'd be a pretty wonky looking flower. Next, we've got our motorized quilling tool. This is really cool, our patented quillies tool. This is basically the same as your regular quilling tool, except we've made it faster and stronger and easier on the hands. You can see when I push the button that that metal slotted tine turns on its own. It makes quilling go much, much faster. I'm going to show you that more in a second. We've also got this really cool crimper tool. A couple of gears, you stick your paper strip through them, turn them, and it's going to give your paper a really fun wavy edge. Uh, a few other things you need. Glue. I like just a regular old school glue, something thin. You want it to dry clear and you want it to dry fast. If you use uh, like a tacky glue or an, even a super glue, it's going to be way too much. It's going to take too long to dry or it's going to be too hard to work with. So just regular old white glue usually works fine. I've also got um, this mat here. This is just a, actually a non-stick oven mat. Um, it's a nice non-stick surface that you can cut down. They're pretty cheap. It makes it really easy to work because you are, again, using glue. So you want to make sure that you're working on a surface that you're not going to ruin. You don't want to do this like right on your dining room table. You want to put something down, even if it ends up being a paper plate, something to protect your surface. I've also got, this is just a little lid here. I like to have somewhere to put a little puddle of glue when I'm working. And if I put it right on my work surface, I will inevitably put my hand in it. A uh, few other things. I've got a little paintbrush here. You can see it's totally glued shut. Um, this is what I use to basically dab into my glue puddle and put onto my paper. It makes it a lot easier. You could even just use a toothpick for this. It would work fine. Just need something small that you can control the glue with. I would suggest not trying to just glue straight from the bottle. It's really hard to control and it's really important with quilling. You don't want a puddle of glue. You want just enough glue to hold your thin paper together, but not too much. And then I've also got just a little pair of fine nose tweezers here, um, real pointy. These just make quilling easier. It's not necessary, but it's a nice tool to have if you're going to be doing a lot of it. And that's pretty much it. Oh, I almost forgot your paper strips. Probably the second most important tool, really. Uh, you can't do quilling without paper strips. So that's everything you need. It's pretty simple. You don't need a whole lot. Let's talk about how to quill. So let's start with what I, how I explained. You're going to take a strip of paper like these. You're going to turn them into a coil, just like this. You're then going to pinch that coil into shapes, like that. And then you're going to take those shapes and you're going to glue them together to form more shapes. So a couple more of these and I can have a whole flower. It's very, very simple. So let's show you how it works. We're going to start with our standard regular old quilling tool. You can see here I've got a slot on the end of my tool. I'm going to stick my paper in. There you go. You can see it like that. I don't want it to stick out too far, just a tiny bit so that it grabs it. And then I'm going to keep this up against my finger and I'm going to just start twirling this tool. And you can see my paper strip. I want to try and control it. I want to keep it straight. I don't want that paper strip to telescope out. And I've got it balanced on my finger the whole time because it's really keeping the coil tight and it's keeping it controlled. If I let go, it would just go all over and uh, there's no way I would ever get this nice coil. 
So here, I'm all done. You can kind of see that. I've got my finger up against it because it's not going anywhere and it's not opening up. If I left it like this and glued it shut, this would be a tight coil. But I want to open it up. So I've grabbed it there. And I'm going to take it, I'm going to stick it in one of my number two slots, just like that. You could see that coil popped right open, but it's only going to open as far as the hole I put it in, which is what I like. I want to keep it that size. I'm going to do that one more time but I'm going to use my motorized quilling tool so you can see the difference. I'm going to do the same thing. I've got a slot in my tool here. There it goes. I'm going to hold that paper up against this bottom little plate, and then my finger is against it. I'm going to push my button just like that. Happened really quick. Now, to get it off, this little plate is removable. I'm going to carefully pull that off just like that. I've got it sandwiched between my fingers so that coil isn't going anywhere. I'm going to slide it off that plate, tuck its little tail. I'm going to stick him in my other number two so that I can have nice uniform coils just like that. Now I need to glue those shut so that they stay that size. So I'm going to take my glue. I'm going to pour myself a little puddle. Don't need much. I'm going to take my uh, handy dandy glue covered paintbrush here. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on my brush. You really, really don't need much. I'm going to very carefully pull this out. I'm going to push it on the side to pop it out. I'm going to hold it so because I really don't want that coil to open up. I want to keep that size. And on the inside edge of this paper, about a quarter inch uh, amount of paper, I'm going to cover in glue. I'm not sure if you can see it there on the camera. I don't have a lot of glue. It's not dripping. And then I'm just going to fold this over and I'm just going to hold this here for a few seconds. Nice thing about this just thin white glue, it dries really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and set that guy down. And let me set this here. Usually give them at least 20 30 seconds to dry. But right now, I'm going to show you how to pinch them into a shape. So the edge here, where the paper edge is, is usually where I try and pinch because it's less noticeable on that edge when it's in a corner. And you just pinch like that, and now I've got a pretty teardrop. That's all there is to it. Now if I made five or six of these, I'd have a whole nother flower. Very, very simple. So let me show you how to use your crimper tool. It's going to be very similar. Grab another strip of paper here. And I take this tool, and you can kind of see these gears line up. I'm going to put my paper along this bottom edge, and I'm just going to twist this, twist these gears just like this. It's going to pull that paper through, and it's going to give this really fun wavy edge. See that? And now I can use this strip the same way I use any other paper strip. I can twist it. Uh, on my regular on my regular quilling tool. I can use it on my mechanical tool here, my quillies. And look at that. It gives you a really fun um, look to your coil because I'm going to open this up a little bit. You can really see all those ripples and ridges in there. It's really, really cool. And you can use this almost the same way you use your regular strips in most of your things. You can put it in your coil and let it open up. And if they don't want to open up, you can kind of tap on them and bounce them around a little, and they usually open up after a few, a few seconds. So that's how to use your crimper tool. It's pretty cool. We've covered your basics here. I'm going to give you a few more examples. This is done with the crimper tool. So you can really see all your ridges. Uh, the last thing we can do is use dimensional strips to make these fancy dimensional flowers. So these are really cool. These paper strips are die cut. You can see here. They've got this really neat edge and they usually our strip packs come with four different shapes. And then you can combine them. Um, you can play with different colors and you can get these really fun, pretty flowers and they're dimensional. They stick up off of your page or your card or whatever you're putting them on and they're really, really beautiful when they're done. So let me go ahead and show you that. I will say with the dimensional strips, uh, I would recommend not using the Quillies tool. It's just a little too fast. It's hard to control. So with these, you really want to use your regular quilling tool. And what you're going to do, you're going to stick your paper strip in so that the flat side 
is facing your tool and that the die cut side is facing away from your tool. And you're gonna just twirl these just like you do your paper. You wanna kind of um, go slow and you're gonna play with how tightly you turn this. Um, you pull your paper on it because you really wanna make sure that these um, little petals don't line up all right on top of each other when you turn it and so sometimes they tend to do that and that's when you kind of want to adjust how tight or loose you're, you're turning it because you want those to kind of fall away from each other. You don't really want them right all on top of each other um, so that when you open it up it looks like a fuller flower. You just want to try as much as you can to keep the base um, straight and flat. It's a little tricky. It takes a little bit of practice to do these. So then you pull your piece off I'm going to go ahead and get my little glue uh, piece here. I'm going to glue on just about a quarter inch of glue, just enough, and then push that and hold that down. I'm going to go ahead and hold this. I could stick this in one of my coils, but it's hard to know really what size it is. So usually just hold this for about 10 seconds and let that glue um, really set. Set that down. Now I can take this just as it is and make a flower. I'm going to show you um, the nice thing about these dimensional flowers is when you combine them and you make a bigger flower with different shaped petals. They look really, really impressive. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. It's very, very easy. So I'm going to take a different strip. This one's kind of a fenced strip here. And then I'm going to take, we'll do two different colors. So what you're going to do, I'm going to make a longer strip by overlapping these and gluing them together. That way when I curl them, I'll have a different color center than the edge. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue, I'm going to overlap, and just push that down, try and keep the edges straight, the bottom edges straight as much as possible. I'm going to push those together. Again, after about 10 seconds, it's usually fine. Okay, so now I'm going to start with the end that I want to be the center of my flower, is where the one, the side you want to start with. So I'm going to take this, I've got my flat edge towards my tool, I'm going to start twirling this, this little um, fringed strip makes really, really nice centers of flowers. So I'm going to keep twirling that. You can kind of see I'm telescoping a little there, so push that back down. Try and keep it controlled. Now this is, it gets a little tricky and it takes a little practice. I will uh, warn you about that. Now I want to make sure that my petals aren't all laying right on top of each other. There we go. I just adjusted how tight I'm pulling it to make sure that I've got some petals that aren't all right up on top of each other. It's a little tricky, like I said. It just takes a little bit of practice because this is getting kind of loose. It's just harder to control the looser you roll it. So I'm going to be very careful. When I get to the end, I'm going to pull this off and hold on to it. Glue the end of this closed just like that. Hold that down for about 10 seconds, but you can kind of see how the center of this looks against the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and set that down while that finishes drying. I'm going to take my first one here and show you how to open the petals. You basically just kind of support the bottom of it and use your fingers, your thumbs usually, and pull out these petals along the outside, just like that farther out you pull them, the fuller it's going to look like that. Okay, this one should be okay to start messing with. I'm going to be careful because this is pretty loose, the coil, and I'm just going to start peeling these flower petals out. Open this flower up. Again, the more you open it up, the fuller it's going to look. The fringed Petals are a little bit tighter, especially in the center. You can't really open the center ones too much. It usually helps if you've got some thumbnails. And just like that, 
Isn't that beautiful? Now the trick with these, once I've got these done, is how do you glue them onto something? So I'm going to take just a little tag here, push these guys out of the way, and the same thing goes for our other strips. So actually, I'm going to make a little tag, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to have these flowers. I'm going to make uh, a leaf real quick. Use my handy dandy Quillies tool, just like that, super fast. Put him in a number two. I'm going to try to put him in a number two. He got away from me a little bit. So if that happens, you can kind of just pick him back up, roll him back up a little bit. There. Got him tame. And then I'm also going to make a coil, um, just like a swirl. So for that, you just need a short piece. It doesn't really matter how long. You kind of play with it and see. I'm going to use my nail, just like you would with curling ribbon, and sort of pre-curl this little strip of paper. And then I'm going to just take my regular quilling tool. I'm going to twir twirl in just one end, not all the way. I'm going to kind of play with it. I'm going to open it up and then re-curl it. Um, I want it to kind of have a soft edge. So I'm going to make this just this nice open coil like that. It's just a really pretty way to kind of fill in spaces. Nice little embellishment. I'm going to take my little green leaf here, pop him out. I'm going to shape him into a marquee. My marquee is just a coil that's been pinched on two opposite ends. So glue him closed for a few seconds. And then I'm going to pinch him on one side and then on the other. And I've got this really pretty leaf shape. So I'm going to take my little tag. And this is where your little glue puddle really comes in handy. I'm going to put a little bit more glue on here. Okay. So, on my tag or your card or whatever you end up putting these on, he's pretty loose. You can see this here, kind of wobbly. Good chance he's going to come apart if I don't glue the base of this together. So, I'm going to grab him. I'm going to take my little glue puddle. I'm just going to dunk the bottom edge in the glue. I'm going to try and kind of get enough of almost all of the paper edges and I could if I wanted to keep him loose kind of like these guys um, these have glue all along the bottom edge and I just put them on a non-stick surface they dried and then now they're good and they stay together but I'm gonna just glue him right down to my project so I'm gonna go ahead and put him down and I'm gonna just push on him a little bit and he'll stick down I'm gonna do the same thing with my second flower Dip him in my little puddle. Go ahead and glue him down. About there. Push down on him. This glue dries pretty fast, so usually you can let this go for 20, 30 seconds before you move it and then it'll be good. Same thing, this guy. I'm gonna do the same thing. This is where actually I'm gonna show you tweezers come in handy because I can just grab him with my little tweezers and dunk him right there in his glue. And you can see I don't have a lot of glue on here. I have enough glue to cover just that bottom edge of the paper and that's all I need. I don't need it to be dripping off. I'm going to go ahead and stick him down, push on him a little bit, get all those glue edges to touch my card. And then I'm going to take this little swirl and grab him with my tweezers and do the same thing. Now it's just this one thin little piece of paper, but I tell you he's going to stick great with just a little bit of glue on his edges. That's all he needs. I'm going to go ahead and stick him just like that. Push it down, make sure he's touching, and there you go. Very, very simple little card, or little tag. It's as easy as it is. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. I'm going to show you a quick example. Uh, take that and oops, make it much, much bigger. Ooh, if I can get down here this beautiful frame that was all done exactly that way, which is simple flowers and simple dimensional flowers and some pretty curls. Very, very, very easy. Now one more thing I did want to show you guys. If you get our um, card kits, 
they come with these instruction booklets. And I know I mentioned that in the instructions there are some um, recipes, basically, that you use your quilling template for. So in this book, you're going to have instructions here on how to quill, but you're also going to show you all the basic shapes that you can make once you make a coil and just do some simple pinching. And then on your other pages, it's going to show you how to take those shapes and turn them into other shapes by gluing those pieces together. It's very easy. And when you're reading this, let's say this gift box, it says create four loose coils, which basically means you're going to let them open up. And you're going to form squares, which I explained to you on the page before. So your paper length, it says is 12 inches, which is pretty standard. You're going to take one piece of paper, or you're going to actually make four of them, and you're going to use the circle size number three. So when you make your coils, you're going to make four of them with a 12 inch strip, and you're going to use number three to make those, you turn those into squares and glue them together. So it's very, very simple. And that is it. That's pretty much how to quill. If you have any questions, feel free to check us out online. We do have a website, threebirdsdesign.com. You can also find us on Facebook and on Instagram for more inspiration. Thanks guys, and I hope you enjoy quilling.